Hello my friends. Here we are. Hello. Good evening. Hi my friends. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to my channel and um, to my life tonight. My name is uh, Angela Bailey and I am the owner and creative energy of Elfen und Helden. Um, apart from rhinestone designs, we also do furniture painting and arts and crafts and all different sorts of things. And um, at the moment I am working on a shelving system, which is basically, well, not only a shelving system, um, it's got a beautiful back, so I decided I'm going to make something like a bar type out of it, because it's got a, a big top um, where you can stand things and stuff like that. And the back was far too nice to just um, put it against the wall or something like that. So what we've done to that um, piece before I, oh, before I continue. Um, firstly, um, thank you for tuning in. Um, and uh, please let me in the comments uh, where you're watching from. And if you maybe used the Dixie Belle paints before or which paints you've used. And uh, I would love to, to see that. And uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. You can leave them either in English or in German in there. And I'll come back to them probably later then. I don't know if I can do it during this live. But I'm definitely going to answer them probably later. So, hi, mein Hase. It's schön warm oben vorm Ofen. My sweetheart is watching from upstairs. Um, I'm down in the basement and um, I have to apologize. It might be that the heating system now and then uh, jumps on uh, is, uh, and it's gonna be a little loud, but um, that's the best place to work and to be messy and stuff like that because I'm a messy painter. So anyhow, what I've done to that piece beforehand, um, I'm working tonight with uh, Dixie Bell chalk mineral paints. And Dixie Bell is a paint company from America and the, the, yeah, their whole range of paints are mostly very um, environmental friendly and um, water based and got hardly any smells and stuff like that. So, and the nice thing about them is that you usually, you don't need to do any prep or stuff like that for, for your projects. Uh, but what you definitely have to do is um, is cleaning your piece because obviously you don't know where where it's been. Um, well, if it has been in your house, you know where it's been, but uh, how long it was standing there and um, over the time there's like um, whatever grease or maybe smoke or something like that um, left on the surface. So you want to have it nicely cleaned and uh, if you're in the US, Dixie Bell has got a product which is called White Lightning. Uh, you can use that uh, for cleaning. Over here in Europe, um, we, um, we are not getting it at the moment. Hopefully one day they'll have the uh, permission to import it over here to Europe. At the moment they are not um, because their product has got uh, chemicals in them. So there's like different rules for importing. So. The white lightning we are not getting here, so therefore I've cleaned that piece with some with some vinegar water, basically to get all the the stuff off from the from the surface. And what I've also done to that piece, and there's another product we're not getting at the moment over here in Europe, but um, as far as I heard, um, the product Boss um, B O double S. Uh, is uh, about to come sometime. I haven't got a schedule when, when it's going to be here, but it's going to come to Europe. That's that's for definite. Um, I didn't have it yet, so because it's like a pretty dark oak wood, and uh, I mean, I'm using dark colors, but even so, I don't want it to, to go through. I've done some 
um, some shellac on it so that uh, I'm not getting the, the bleed through. And then I've put a base coat down and the base coat uh, was basically the um, from Dixie Bell chalk mineral paint road which is a nice well dark gray you can see that there and uh, I've put two coats down uh, on the on the whole piece and I've used um, this already on on another project and it's still oh, not able to be open Let's see this. and it's still basically like um, loads of paint left in there so um, those paints are really they really go a long way so that's what I use for a base coat and you already seen that I'm um, I've put some of those um, nails in there I don't know what they are they're studs okay there are some sort of studs I put those in there to give it a bit more of um, yeah of an industrial type of um, of character and the last time we also put on those uh, would you bend moldings so if you've missed that that video is up on my channel you can check it out there um, it was last Thursday I think and it shows you exactly how you can work with those um, moldings uh, they're called would you bend and the nice thing about them is you can see it with this um, with this trim around here um, they are out of wood and they're well as you can hear now they're really 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 hard and you can when you heat them up they excuse me they get soft and you can like bend it around any surface uh, you want to have them on and you just glue them on with some wood glue so as I said it's up on my channel so if you want to watch that um, you're very welcome Again, if you're just uh, popping on, just um, say hello and um, tell me where you're watching from. I'd love to see that. And uh, if you, well, maybe you used Dixie Bell paints before. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments also. I'll answer them later. So, as I said, I've put those um, nails in there. And I'm going to show you in a minute quickly how I measure them out and... Um, that you don't need to be scared of um, power tools or something like that. Uh, it's, it's very, very easy to do, to get um, this type of character to, to any project, basically. And um, then you can see this um, is basically, that's the color Rusty Nail from uh, Dixie Bell. Um, the finish I'm going for, I'm just going to show you one side I've got finished, I'm just going to turn it around so you can see. This is basically, this is, can you see that? This is basically the finish I'm going for at the end. It's like a patina type, like rusty coppery whatever um, finish this this is what it's going to be at the end and um, Dixie Bell has got a product which is the patina collection which is unfortunately also not available in Europe at the moment so I thought I'm just going to show you basically that you can create this finish also with the the normal um, chalk mineral paints from from Dixie Bell, so that's um, that'll be great. Oh, hello, hello, Chrissy. Thank you for tuning in. That's great. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's that's what we're going for. And you can see, can you see? I shall bring you down. This is basically the first step is like getting this um, the rusty nail down and um, I also put some sea spray in it to get like um, like this um, crusty finish and this the next step is going to be like uh, with some I'm going to show you all that and I'm just gonna um, introduce you to the steps first. And this is like, uh, I wanted to have like the metal look underneath, so it's coming through a little bit. And this is basically what I've done there. And we're going to do that together. But we are going to start now. I'm just going to turn it around. 
right now. And I'm just gonna show you. All the feet are still on there. Just turn it around. And you can see I've taped basically off where um, I love to use um, just like a piece of tape for, for things like that when I want to get a straight line. Um, there might be a more elegant way but uh, that's the way I'm doing it and it makes it much easier for me. So basically what I've done, I decided where I wanted, uh, in which um, height I wanted to have the those nails in. So I taped it down and then I measured it out um, firstly in the middle from top to bottom and then from the middle to the middle and decided where I'm going to, to put the the nails and um, marked it on, on the thing and then you basically because the nails which are going to go in there is like that's basically what they are like is this type there yeah, got this little nail so because I didn't want it uh, wanted to nail them in there with a hammer only because uh, I'm not exactly miss muscle so I decided to use um, a power tool which is this one this is um, from Bosch it's like um, um, a, um, a screwdriver or a, a drilling machine a small one with um, with a battery, um, easy to handle, and I got myself like um, like a very tiny drill to go into the wood. It's a, it's a metal drill. You can use a wood drill or a metal drill to go into the wood, and it's just easy to handle. It's just that thing is because it's very thin. It's only I think it is uh, it's only one and a half millimeters in diameter, so that's very very tiny. That's the ones I'm using basically for it. It's very, very tiny, and um, if you press on it too hard, um, it might break. So you just got to do it a little careful. And the only thing you're going to do is like you just um, put it on, and then you can just like easily do it in there. That's it. And don't go in too far, otherwise the, the nails are going to just sink in. If that happens, happens to me also. Even there is no problem, you can um, just uh, get some wood glue and um, glue them in. They're, they've got nothing to hold, so that's uh, not that much of a worry. And if you want to make sure that you're not drilling in too far, you could uh, always put like a piece of tape um, basically on there. Um, basically check how far you want to have those to go in. And then you just put a piece of tape um, to where it's going, got to go in and um, go that way. But I'm just going to like eyeball it. It's, um, quickly. That's it. And the other ones are already drilled on the other side. And when you've done that, you can basically pull the tape off and um, either drill them all. No, not, not on top there. Do it quickly up there. Checking. So now I should have them all. So you can see it's also no problem to put. Um, 
go and then you basically you just take your nails and you just hammer them the last bit in and that's it can you see yeah, you can see see that's already too far in the top on there so that's it And that's the way you go there's no and then you can basically paint over them at the end and that's what i've done at the front so that's the way to go about that i just wanted to show you quickly how you can manage this and uh, that you got an idea how this works i shall put that to the side and this is a very, very solid piece and it's very heavy. There's, um, it's got a bit of damage on the, on the top, which has got to be repaired. But um, so, and what we, at first I'm going to show you how I created um, this type of finish. How we got to there we're going to do that uh, on this side that's the reason i left it here i wanted to um, to have like this basically later comes through like a little bit of a rust finish so what i've done for that firstly i've put um, my coat of the of the rusty nail which is like the perfect rust color basically you know to use for a project like that it comes beautiful through at the end so shake your paints always well before use it is um, they are chalk mineral paints so um, they should um, they should be mixed up well before use um, usually I like to dampen my brush, but um, for this project um, today, because it's more like um, like a dry brush effect, I'm gonna gonna do later. I don't wanna. Um, I don't need to have it wet. So this basically, I'm using um, two different brushes today, or three different brushes for the um, for the finish. Uh, I'm going to do at the bottom, like um, I've done there. I'm using round and um, oval um, brushes. They're also from Dixie Bell. This is the, the round large and the oval medium I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna start with the round large and with the rusty nail. And I'm just gonna put like, um, firstly, the coat down here. You can see I'm first using the, the paint out of the lid, you know. I'm not putting much paint on the brush either. And I'm just gonna go around here. I'm firstly gonna put like a light coat on there. You can see how well that paint covers, even there's like this dark underground. And the, the base coat was the gravel road. It's a beautiful, um, it's beautiful dark gray. So I'm just gonna go around here, just quickly. This is not about beauty, what I'm doing now. I mean, I would usually put a bit more um, like um, effort into it, but um, as this is um, just gonna be underneath and um, getting revealed a little bit um, later on, I'm not gonna show very much of it. And um, those industrial elements, obviously, I wanna have a bit rusty later also. Get some of this color on there as well. Get it nicely covered. Just dab it on there. Get some. Can you see what I'm doing there? I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's better. That's 
that's better. Ooh, this is a bit of a... I'm not the perfect cameraman, so I think you can see now. Yeah. I'm just going to dab it around there to get it nicely covered. And also this um, lovely industrial butterfly. It's got some industrial elements in it. As I said, I'm just using the paint out of the lid at the moment. I'm gonna get it around those areas which I wanna have like for the rusty finish at the end, peeking through. So, and um, whoever just is popping in, just say hello. And um, I highly appreciate if you leave me a like there and if you haven't done it yet, just um, go to my page and um, like my page so that you get uh, information basically when I'm gonna go do the next projects and stuff like that. So I really appreciate that. So a new brush, there's some of the things coming off. And also, I'm just gonna get some on those nails for now. Doesn't look very beautiful at the moment. It's gonna get even worse in a minute. <laughs> and but the finish is going to be quite, quite spectacular, I think. I love the, the copper finish. Manfred doesn't. I showed it to him yesterday. Like, um, He's, um, oh, that's the heating now coming on. I'm sorry, guys. It's gonna get a bit loud in a minute or for a while. Um, I hope it's not too bad, but that's the best place for me to work at at the moment. So, to do my mess, it's like at the shop, I don't have the, the space to do my projects, so I have to do it basically in my studio. And this is my studio in Marburg, where my sweetheart lives. And I'm quite grateful that I, that I at least can um, use this basement for, for things like that. So that's that. And uh, now I'm going to, to mix my, my uh, the mixture basically to get like this um, yeah, this rusty and uh, this, I don't know what you call it in English. Guys, I'm German after all, so sometimes I'm losing, well, I'm missing the words. This is like, um, it's like, uh, well, it's sea spray. It's gonna come in a minute to me. This is sea spray. This is um, also from Dixie Bell. It's like a supplement to for the paints. It's a powder you can mix into the paints and you can get like this, um, yeah, basically this uh, this type of look. It thickens up the paint and it's like, um, yeah. So what I do, where's my, yes, yeah, So they say that you mix, they, it comes with, um, it comes with, with a spoon, like a spoon comes with this thing and you usually what you do is you put uh, two scoops into eight hours um, of paint but um, I'm just gonna eyeball it you can basically you can make it any consistency you want to have it and I want to have it pretty thick so I'm just gonna use um, this little box here I'm just gonna pour some paint in there I'm probably gonna make a right mess again so that's it, just some paint and then I'm going to first put a little bit and then see how that goes. I'm just going to put like, like a little bit in there, just pour it in there and then you mix it up, you can see like a powder and you mix it in the paint and um, the paint keeps basically its, its color it doesn't change the color at all this changes the consistency of the the paint it thickens it, it thickens it up 
What a difficult word for a German person. TH, please. <laughs> so it thickens up the paint and you can Depends um, what consistency you want to have. So this is probably, you see, it's like, uh, still, I think I want to have it a little thicker. Just a little bit more. Just a tiny, tiny. Oops. Just a tiny, tiny. Let's see how it goes. I'm not wasting anything. Dropping it on top of the piece. So I'm just gonna mix it up. Mix it well under. And when I work with this product, I'm just gonna get like a cheap. Uh, chip brush and for this I'm gonna get like a small one because I want to get into the corners and stuff like that so That's the word I was looking for. For it looks like it's got that like this crusty look, like rust, crust, and stuff like that. So that's the way I want to have it, nice and thick. That's what I'm looking for. And then I'm gonna get my little tiny chip brush. So obviously, um, with stuff like that, you don't want to put like, if there's any leftovers down the drain or something like that, it'll block your drain, obviously, you know, because it hardens up. So if you have any leftover of the paint or stuff like that, you can either put it in a jar and lock it. It's going to hold for, um, for a while or you just throw it in the, in the dump. So, but not down the drain. So, let's see. I'm gonna see if I can get you a little closer so you can see a bit better what I'm doing there. Hang on, we're gonna go fly. So, that's it. Sorry about that. I'm just gonna see how that um, is gonna be the best way to go. I think that's fine like that. You just tell me if you can um, can see. Hallo Annette, <laughs> dir auch einen schönen Abend. Han Münden. Ist glaube ich gar nicht so weit von hier von Marburg, oder? <laughs> Wonky. Oh, wonky. That's better. So, here we got the sea spray mixture. It's nice and thick, and this is just like a cheap little chip brush I'm using for this. And then I'm just gonna go around those edges and I'm just gonna dab it down. Oh, I think I wanna have more of the sea spray in there. Still too watery for me because I want to have some nice texture and um, try this. So you can basically do it um, how thick you want to have it. That's um, that's up to you. And what they've put on there is like two scoops for uh, 
for a small jar of paint it's basically just a recommendation if you want to have it thicker or thinner that's um, up to you and I want to definitely have it thicker let's see how that is I really want to, that's better. Really want to build up some texture in those corners. Still, even more. And you just dab it around, and you want to build up those, um, like those, just texture. So that's why I'm just dabbing it. And you can. Well, if you want to have it more flat or even higher, that's, well, that's um, basically, you can do that how you would like to have it. So that's the texture. I have it a bit more in this corners here. And, um, guys, I hope you can hear me all right and everything. Um, Can you hear me all right? Just um, let me know if you can hear me. I'm not quite sure. I so, can't hear myself, so that's um, I rely on to you to tell me that. So I'm just gonna go around those edges here. I said I just want to have like this, um, like this crusty, crusty finish. So around the butterfly also. Probably have to do some more of this. Let's see. And you just dab it where you want to have it to get this finish and as I said um, the reason I mean the the positive thing about using um, not the patina paints from Dixie Belle but the chalk mineral paints from them is uh, a bit more work but um, the chalk mineral paints are totally environmental friendly and the patina paints, they've got like a little smell to them. You really should um, use them in an area, in a well ventilated area, you know, because you use this um, spray to activate it and stuff like that. So, but with this paint, um, they don't smell, they're water-based. Um, don't do any harm and even this uh, sea spray stuff is like natural it's like some type of dust type so that's basically around those um, nails also because that's the character of rust that it builds up around those things this you see everything I'm doing there it looks very blotchy at the moment and it's gonna get even worse in a minute <laughs> that's it but the finish you've seen at the beginning if you missed the, the beginning um, this video is gonna be up there later on in uh, Facebook and you can always uh, watch it later and when you watch the replay, also please then let me know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I shall come back to you later then. Just have this texture nicely around there. Let's see if I've done enough of that. So, there we go. That's it. And as I said, you can smoothen it out or build it up however you wish. That's just up to you. It's just um, 
basically how you like it or not liking it and um, And then we can let that dry and then we start with that um, metal finish I've done at the bottom here um, on the top side, on the other side there. So you can basically see how we've done that. That's it. So, I think we got to be fine. It's just like a cheap little mini um, mini brush. So um, that's it. And as I said, don't uh, pour it down the drain. The if there are some leftovers, uh, throw it away because this uh, is gonna harden up and um, it's gonna block your drain otherwise. So did I miss, oh yes, I did miss anything. I'm gonna go around there also. Let's see if I have enough you can get around. I think this is just gonna be about enough. Here. As I said, at the moment it's not about beauty. This is basically just like because it's gonna eventually peek through when we are finished. So, looks ugly, doesn't it? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> so, it so this is basically how i've got um, this uh, finish created it's just like that and now we're going to go on to the other side i'll just put it to the side and now we are using several colors let's move you guys over here and um So. Oh, thank you, Sonia. Hi, Anna. Okay, what are you putting on that thread? And the red is basically a uh, rusty nail. It's um, the chalk mineral paint from Dixie Bell. And I've mixed it up with sea spray, which is like, um, like a mineral powder to um, which gives uh, a consistency to the paint and you can basically get like this um, yeah like this texture onto onto your piece and as I'm going for a rust finish that's the reason I'm I'm using this um, basically this uh, sea spray I'm gonna put the paint down here I'm going to need that now that one so now the fun begins um, let's see I've showed you beforehand let's see if you can see that again like on the bottom there it's like a metallic -y look and I've used some metallics from Dixie Bell and I've used the metallic silver bullet I've used the um, metallic carabin and um, I've used, that's a silver bullet, which is a nice silver. I've used also the rusty nail for it and uh, caviar. 
to darken the whole thing up. And this is the base later on for the for the patina. So this is basically like um, also just like a middle step. And the finish is going to be like uh, like uh, copper and rust and uh, patina finish. And the thing is, because um, in Europe we can't get the, the patina line at the moment. And that's the reason I'm creating that finish with, uh, with the Dixie Bell chalk mineral paints. So, I shall get you that you can see what I'm doing on this side. So that's, let's see, that should be fine. Can you see everything on this side? So I'm kneading now. Um, I'm first gonna open up all my paints. So this is, now you're gonna get some muscles. Shake them all well. Even the metallics, they are chalk mineral paints with some metallic uh, particles in them. Them also. They are water-based and they, that's the carabine, which is a nice blue and a silver bullet, which is a really bright silver. And then we have the caviar, which is a, a jet black, basically. So it's a nice, real deep black. I'm going to use that. And here again first, we're using the paint out of the lid and because we're going to do some swirl motions I'm using the I'm just gonna put it to the side I'm just using some round and um, all the brushes as I'm using four colors I'm using four brushes and what I'm doing basically is like um, putting blobs of the single paints down and I'm going to start with some black. The, I'm first using the paint out of the lid again. Just put some paint on the brush and then just put it down randomly. A little more, just put it down randomly. I'm just gonna start with a jet black, then I'm gonna come in with my rusty nail, which is basically my rust color. I didn't have to mix anything because that's uh, for me that's perfect. Just put it on. And you want to basically mix the colors together then at the end. They are going to be nicely blended and it's going to get like a metally finish. that and as I said with this is swirling around this is some um, pretty hard work so now I'm gonna get my carabine also nice nice blue and also just putting it down nice and blotchy as you can see and when you do something like that, just don't think too much. Just put it down and it's going to come together. So, and there's going to be the, like the patina on top later on anyway, so you won't see too much of it. And, but this metal -y look is um, going to peek through at the end. And the last one we're using is the silver bullet, which is the color to blend everything together. To blend everything together and get the metal look at uh, finally. So I'm just gonna put it down. I'm just gonna use the color out of the lid. So now I'm going all in swirly motions and blend it nicely together. And this is all basically with. Um, dry brushing. I'm using all dry brushes because I want to have those swirly basically movings around there. 
So and then you can go back if you think or you want to have some more rust. Then you're just going to go back with your rust color. Put some more in. But you can get some more of the Caribbean if you want to have some more blue undertones. Put in some more here for example. And if you want to darken it up a little bit. Just do it this way, swirl it around, and then you can get your silver bullet again and basically just mix it all together. It looks all blotchy, but at the end it's going to get like a like a metally like a metally look with some um, slight rust undertones. You can blend it as far as you like, or as less as you like. And um, I like that. I'm gonna have a bit more of a blue in there. Not too much. That's it. And that's the way you go around, basically. Then um, I'm gonna start with the caviar again. Nice blob there. Then I'm gonna put some rust, rusty nail. Mix it already together. So that's a perfect rust color. There is. And then the Caribbean. I'll be careful not mixing up. I'm sorry, the heating again, guys. I hope it's not too loud. So, good thing for this is I'm I'm right-handed, but um, I really would have loved to be a left-hander. But at school I was forced to write with my right hand. So still, there's a lot of things I'm doing right-handed and a lot of things I'm doing left-handed, which is sometimes quite useful. With painting, and sometimes I'm painting left and sometimes I'm painting right. <laughs> Especially with, um, because you need some muscles for that, you know, with like uh, just swirling around. This is pretty, pretty heavy. So, there you go. That's it. This it's a lot black in here. Yeah. You wanna have those colors all nicely blended into each other. So at the end it gets like this um metally look. That's it. Oh, mix the paints up now. Oh whatever. Yet. it over there, swirl motions, so you have at the end basically like a brushed metal look. You could totally leave it like that if you wish to, but um, as I'm going for a different look, I'm going to have the, the patina over it at the end basically. 
And as I said, you can do that as far as you wish to go. And I want to leave some of the rust basically at the bottom there. And, um, so it's going to look natural basically. The misty bottle, um, Sonia. This is more like a dry brush thing, so I'm not um, I'm not using a mister bottle for this one at the moment. Um, I'm gonna use uh, the mister bottle, or not even the mister bottle. I'm just using some water um, in a minute when I'm doing the the dripping or the patina. But for this, um, this is more like a dry brush thing. I don't want to um, blend it too much together. I'm not using water on this one. That's different. And I want to keep like this, um, like this swirly brush strokes to give it like the brushed metal look, basically, which can peek through later on. basically the silver bullet to blend it all together. Here also you just use the silver bullet to blend everything in. And you can do this basically however far you want to go for it. I'm going to put the silver up here. That's basically the in-between look we are having now. So, nice and dirty. That's it. So, just gonna dry that a little bit and then I'm gonna show you what's the time. Oh, I'm already on for an hour already. So just a couple of minutes. So that's it. I'm going to quickly dry that a little bit. And For now, paints to the side. I'm not tripping over them. And so, oh, okay. Well, thank you, Zonia. That's sweet. <laughs> so, I hope everything's okay with you. Um, did you receive everything? Um, so, shall I continue now or um, is it already too long? Shall I carry on? Oh, just gonna get these. My Christmas present heat, heat gun. This is like, usually we just let it dry overnight. So, 
just get it dried off. And as I said, you could basically just leave it like that if you wish to. I mean, it's already a quite um, yeah, metallic -y industrial look. going to be like um, cutting up finish anyway and this is basically for you guys over here in Europe I hope you can hear me talking now for you guys over here in Europe where we can't get the patina paint at the moment but uh, we can still get like a nice patina rusty look A little bit. So we can go to the next step. And for the patina, I'm basically using another chalk mineral paint, which is the yeah, which is the um, the in the gold. Oops. Up here. It's in the golf. It's like a nice patina type um, turquoise teal color. And this one, Sonia, therefore I'm using now a spray bottle because I want to have that drip down basically the whole piece. You can see it's like, it's purple. It's like down here, it's like, it really looks like. Um, like it's rusting in there and this the the metallics in combination with the chalk mineral paint it's not like too shiny you know it's just like it's like a yeah like a brushed metally look around here and yet now you can really see like popping the like the texture of the sea spray through here. So, let's grind it off quickly. So now I'm just gonna, I've got to clean that brush because I've, I've um, Bumped it in the wrong color. I want to have a bit more of the rust on the on the highs of the of the paint. But I've got to clean the brush first a little bit because I bumped it in the in the wrong. Get it a bit clean and put it into the caviar, which is um, the rest of the way. So get it clean, just like a tiny little bit. And I'm just gonna lightly, very lightly, it's like just dry brushing this. Oops, where are we? There we are. There's just hardly any any paint on there. So I'm just going over the highs in the corners now. Just to Can you see how that just adds like the Just to the highs of the of that texture, it's just adding 
bit more of the rust crust so to say and this is just all done just with um, chalk mineral paints there's no no patina paints or something like that used because as I said we're not getting that at the moment in Europe but um, you can still get like a patina finish this way and um, the positive thing about it is if you use the chalk mineral paints you don't need to worry about a well ventilated room or something like that because those paints, the chalk mineral paints, they don't smell or anything. That's um, so just some dry brushing just over the eyes. So that basically, and then we can get the dripping patina down. a little bit more and obviously when you do that yourself you just leave it dry overnight so that's, um, that's fine the good thing about those chalk mineral paints also is that they dry very very fast there's, yeah it's already dry to the touch That, that you can just like keep brushing and brushing and brushing so I think that's fine now so now the fun begins okay all right okay I'll check that later Sonia so um there we go then we have the in the gold I'm just going to use the paint out of it also. You don't need much of this paint. Look at this nice turquoise patina type color. Get a flat brush for that, which is up here. And I'm taking the normal Mr. Bottle for this, not um, a normal spray bottle, because I don't need fine mist. I want this to drip, so that's why I'm using um, this, um, this bottle. But still, now I want to have my brush wet for this type of um, what I'm going to do now I'm just gonna put the paint down like this and now I'm just gonna have it drip you can help it a little bit if you want to That's basically what we're going to do now. Have it all nicely dripped down. And that's basically how we are getting this in a finish just put in this um, just wetting, wetting it down and just let it drip let it do is um, was patina you say with the patina paints um, they always say let them do the magic and now we're just letting the water do the magic you can help it if you want to with your finger 
little strip in there. And here also you can use as much water or whatever. And um, now you just want to have it. That's it. That's the way you do it. Oh, that's the way I do it anyway. I hope this uh, gives you a bit of an idea and maybe you can get some use out of it. Um, obviously there's um, lots of ways to do things, but that's how I'm doing the, the patina thing for myself. That's how I like it. I'm just getting the paint out of the lid. And do it, wet it down, and just let it drip. So it gets like this nice, crusty, patina type of, um, of look. That's it. You do that all the way down. Obviously, when, when you do that finish, you start at the top and um, basically get it down into the bottom. But also there, I mean, there's loads of ways to, to paint your pieces and to get like different finishes. That's the way I like this finish. And um, I'd be happy if you like that too. Just leave me a like um, on that video. Again, when you um, tune in later, uh, thank you for watching anyway. Um, just let me know where you're watching from and um, leave in the comments where you're watching from. And maybe if you've used uh, Dixie Bell paints yourself. And if so, which one is your favorite color? I would like to hear that also. And if you've done a similar finish. And um, that's the way we go, basically. Guys, that's it for now. What do you think? So we basically went from this finish over to this finish and this took us now about an hour to do so um i think that's quite interesting i like it that way i hope you like it too if you do just um I'll see if i can get myself into the hang on oops sorry flying shall i get you down shall i get you down here we go here i am hi guys <laughs> so that's the finish we made today nice and crusty and rusty and um well i hope you like it and uh, that you found some use out of this um project Thank you for tuning in anyway if you pop in later leave in the comments please where you're watching from and uh, if you haven't done it yet please go over to my page and leave a like there also and um, i highly appreciate that you, then you won't miss uh, if i'm doing the next project and um, there's still some bits and pieces to be done to that um, to that project so i'm probably gonna come on live again and uh, I would uh, be very happy to see you there. If you um, if you want to shop the pro the the products I'm using, if uh, wherever you are, you can go to the Dixie Bell page and check out your local retailer if you haven't got one. Uh, I also carry the products. The um, the web address is uh, up in the on the top. 
and I'll be happy if you pop over to my page. I send all over Europe also and I'll be happy to help you out with that. And I think I'll let you go for now and thank you for watching again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>